Once upon a time, in a cozy little cottage on the outskirts of a bustling town, there lived a kind-hearted woman named Evelyn. She had silver hair that framed her face like a gentle halo, and her eyes held the wisdom of years spent tending to her garden and baking warm apple pies. Evelyn's days followed a simple routine. Each morning, she would rise with the sun, her old bones creaking as she shuffled to the kitchen. There, she would light the stove, its flames dancing merrily, and prepare a hearty breakfast of oatmeal and honey. The aroma would fill the cottage, welcoming the day. Her garden was her pride and joy. Rows of vibrant flowers stood tall, their petals reaching for the sky. Evelyn would tend to them, whispering secrets only the blossoms understood. She believed that flowers held memories, their delicate petals storing moments of joy, sorrow, and love. The townspeople adored Evelyn. Children would gather at her gate, eager to hear her stories. She would sit on the wooden bench, her hands wrinkled but strong, and weave tales of magical creatures, lost treasures, and faraway lands. The children's eyes would widen, and they would hang on her every word. But Evelyn had a secret, a longing that tugged at her heart. She had once been a traveler, her feet taking her to distant shores and hidden valleys. She had danced under moonlit skies, tasted exotic spices, and fallen in love with a sailor named Henry. They had promised each other forever, but life had other plans. Henry's ship had sailed into a storm, and he was lost at sea. Evelyn had waited, her heart aching, until hope turned to memories. She had returned to her cottage, vowing never to leave again. But sometimes, when the wind whispered through the trees, she would close her eyes and imagine Henry's laughter. And so, Evelyn lived her days, tending her garden, baking pies, and sharing stories. The townspeople marveled at her resilience, unaware of the love that still lingered in her heart. They called her the storyteller of the cottage, and children would sit at her feet, their eyes wide with wonder. Chapter 2 The Hidden Diary Lena's determination grew stronger with each passing day. She spent hours in the attic, poring over her mother's belongings. The silver locket became her talisman, a reminder of love lost and a promise to uncover the truth. One rainy afternoon, Lena stumbled upon a dusty leather-bound diary. Its pages were brittle, and the ink had faded to sepia. As she read, she discovered her mother's elegant handwriting, the loops and swirls revealing a woman who had once danced in moonlit gardens. The diary spoke of love and betrayal. Lena's mother, Eleanor, had been deeply in love with a man named Edmund. They had planned to marry, their hearts entwined like ivy on an ancient oak. But fate intervened. Edmund disappeared, leaving behind only a cryptic note. I must protect you. Eleanor's grief spilled onto the pages. She wrote of sleepless nights, of searching for answers in the forest, and of a mysterious woman who had warned her to forget Edmund. That woman, Lena realized, was none other than Agatha, the stepmother who now ruled their home. Lena's pulse quickened. She had to confront Agatha. Armed with the diary, she marched downstairs. Agatha sat by the fireplace, her eyes fixed on the dancing flames. Lena cleared her throat, her voice trembling. Agatha, 
Lena began, What do you know about Edmund? Agatha's gaze shifted to Lena. Her lips curved into a cold smile. Edmund, she mused, a foolish man who believed in fairy tales. He vanished, and good riddance. But my mother loved him, Lena insisted. Why did he leave? Agatha's eyes darkened. Your mother was a dreamer, she said. She couldn't see the danger. Edmund was part of a secret society, a group that guards ancient artifacts. He found something powerful, something Agatha wanted. Lena's mind raced. Artifacts? Secrets? She clutched the diary, its pages whispering of hidden truths. What did Agatha want? She asked. Agatha leaned closer. A key, she hissed. A key that unlocks a portal to another realm. A realm of magic and darkness. Edmund stole it, and Agatha will stop at nothing to retrieve it. Why? Lena's voice cracked. Why does Agatha want this realm? Agatha's laughter echoed through the room. Power, she said, immortality, the ability to rewrite destiny. And your mother, sweet Eleanor, stood in her way. Lena's heart pounded. She had to find the key, protect her mother's legacy, and expose Agatha's malevolence. The battle lines were drawn, the innocent stepdaughter against the wicked stepmother. And so... Lena embarked on her quest. Armed with the diary, the locket, and her mother's unwavering love, she stepped into the enchanted forest. The same forest where Eleanor had once searched for answers. Lena's path was fraught with danger, but she would not falter. For within the forest lay the key, a shimmering gem that held the fate of two worlds. Lena's journey had just begun, and she would unlock secrets that spanned generations. The rain whispered encouragement, and the trees leaned closer, as if sharing their ancient wisdom. Chapter 3 The Forest's Whispers Lena stepped deeper into the forest, her footsteps muffled by moss and fallen leaves. The air grew cooler, and shafts of sunlight pierced through the dense canopy. The trees leaned in, their ancient trunks etched with secrets. The diary had hinted at a hidden path, a trail known only to those who listened. Lena closed her eyes, attuning her senses. She heard the babbling brook to her left, its water singing a forgotten melody. She smelled damp earth and pine needles, and she felt the forest's pulse, the rhythm of life that echoed through every leaf and root. As she walked, Lena noticed peculiar markings on the trees, symbols etched into the bark, a language older than time. She traced her fingers over them, hoping they held clues. The forest seemed to watch her, its rustling leaves whispering secrets. Agatha, Lena murmured, what are you hiding? The wind carried her words, and suddenly, the trees shifted. A narrow path appeared, a ribbon of moss-covered stones. Lena followed it, her heart pounding. She had entered a realm beyond reality, a place where magic danced with danger. The path led to a clearing, a circle of ancient stones. In the center stood a pedestal, and atop it rested a gem, the key. It shimmered like a captured star, its facets holding galaxies within. Lena's breath caught. This was it, the heart of the forest, the bridge between worlds. But Agatha was there too. She emerged from the shadows, her eyes aflame. Lena, she hissed, 
You should not have come. Why? Lena's voice trembled. What is this key? What does it unlock? Agatha circled the pedestal. The key, she said, opens a portal to the realm of shadows. A place where desires manifest, but at a cost. Power, yes, but also sacrifice. Lena remembered her mother's love, her father's bewitchment. Edmund, she whispered, he stole the key. Agatha's laughter echoed. Edmund was a fool, she spat. He thought love could conquer all. But love blinds. The key is mine, and I will rewrite fate. Lena's resolve hardened. She clutched the diary, its pages fluttering in the breeze. My mother loved Edmund, she said. She believed in magic. Agatha's eyes narrowed. And look where it got her, she sneered. Dead. Forgotten. Love is weakness. No, Lena said. Love is strength. It fuels my quest. To protect my mother's memory. To free my father from your enchantment. Agatha lunged, her fingers inches from the gem. But Lena stepped forward, her locket glowing. I am Eleanor's daughter, she declared. And love will guide me. The forest held its breath. Lena seized the key, and the world blurred. Colors swirled, a vortex opening. Agatha screamed, but Lena stepped through, the boundary dissolving. And so, Lena found herself in the realm of shadows, a place of shifting landscapes, where dreams and nightmares intertwined. The key pulsed in her hand, and she knew her journey had just begun. Chapter 4 The Realm of Shadows Lena's surroundings shifted like smoke. The ground beneath her feet felt both solid and insubstantial. She clutched the key, the pulsing gem that connected her to her mother's love. The sky above was a canvas of shifting colors, indigo, violet, and shades unknown to mortal eyes. Creatures flitted by, half-formed, ethereal. Some whispered secrets, while others hissed warnings. Lena ignored them all. She had a purpose, to find Edmund, unravel Agatha's schemes, and restore balance. The path ahead split, a fork in the mist. Lena chose the left, guided by intuition. The air grew colder, and the trees leaned in, their branches like skeletal fingers. She remembered her mother's stories, the ones that spoke of hidden doorways, forgotten spells, and the thin veil between worlds. As she walked, Lena encountered a river, a ribbon of silver that flowed without sound. Its waters shimmered, revealing glimpses of distant lands, a desert of glass, a forest of mirrors, and a city where shadows danced. Lena dipped her fingers into the river, and memories flooded her. The taste of her mother's stew, the warmth of her father's hug, and the ache of loss. The river whispered, Seek the oracle, it said. Only she knows the way. Lena followed the riverbank until she reached a cavern, a yawning mouth in the earth. Torches lined the entrance, their flames blue and unyielding. Lena stepped inside, her footsteps echoing. The walls bore ancient inscriptions, prophecies, riddles, and warnings. At the heart of the cavern sat the oracle, a woman draped in cobweb silk. Her eyes were milky white, yet they saw everything. She held a crystal ball, the size of a grapefruit, its surface swirling with mist. The oracle's voice was a melody, a haunting tune that resonated in Lena's bones. 
Child of love, the oracle said, what brings you to my domain? Lena hesitated. I seek answers, she replied. About the key, about Agatha, about Edmund. The oracle's fingers danced over the crystal ball. Images formed, a ship on stormy seas, a moonlit kiss, and a shadowy figure with eyes like Edmund's. Edmund, the oracle murmured. He sought the key to save his dying sister. Agatha followed, consumed by greed. But why? Lena pressed. Why does Agatha crave power? The oracle's gaze pierced Lena's soul. Agatha was once mortal, she said. A sorceress who hungered for eternity. She stole forbidden knowledge, bargained with ancient beings, and became something more, a creature of shadows. The key grants her dominion over realms, but it demands a sacrifice. What sacrifice? Lena's voice trembled. Love, the oracle whispered. Agatha lost hers long ago. She seeks to rewrite fate, to undo her own heartache. But love cannot be rewritten. It can only be embraced or discarded. Lena clenched the key. And Edmund? Edmund loved your mother, the oracle said. He believed the key could heal his sister. But Agatha's darkness poisoned him. He vanished, leaving behind a fractured world. What must I do? Lena asked. The oracle leaned closer. Choose, she said. Love or power, sacrifice or redemption. The key awaits your decision. Lena's heart ached. She thought of her mother's smile, her father's laughter, and the promise of love that transcended realms. She thought of Agatha's cold eyes and the void within her. And in that cavern, surrounded by ancient magic, Lena made her choice. Chapter 5 The Heart's Choice Lena stood at the crossroads, the key pulsing in her palm. The oracle's words echoed in her mind. Choose. Love or power. Sacrifice or redemption. She thought of her mother's laughter, the way it had filled their home, like sunlight spilling through cracks. Eleanor had believed in love, even when the world turned gray. Lena remembered the warmth of her mother's embrace, the way it had chased away nightmares and whispered, You are enough. But Agatha's darkness loomed, the stepmother's eyes held secrets, hunger, bitterness, and a longing for eternity. She had twisted love into something sharp, a weapon to rewrite fate. And Edmund? His face haunted Lena, the man who had vanished, leaving behind fractured memories. Lena's decision weighed heavy. She could grasp the key, unlock the portal, and confront Agatha. Power awaited. The ability to reshape reality, to rewrite her father's enchantment, and perhaps even bring Edmund back. But at what cost? Sacrificing love, the very thing that had sustained her mother's spirit. Or she could choose love. Keep the key hidden protect her mother's legacy, and embrace the ache of loss. Agatha would rage, but Lena would stand firm. She would honor Eleanor's memory, the woman who had danced with moonbeams and believed in magic. The forest watched, a silent witness. The river murmured, urging Lena to decide. The gem pulsed, as if echoing her heartbeat. Lena closed her eyes, seeking guidance. And there, in the stillness, she heard her mother's voice, the echo of love that transcended realms. Choose, Eleanor whispered, not for me, but for you. 
For the girl who deserves a world where love is stronger than shadows. Lena's fingers tightened around the key. She stepped away from the pedestal, away from Agatha's hunger. The path split once more, the mist parting like a veil. Lena chose the right fork, the one that led back to the mortal world. As she emerged from the cavern, the forest greeted her, the trees swaying, the leaves applauding. Lena felt lighter, as if she had shed Agatha's darkness. She would keep the key safe, hidden in her heart. Love would guide her, the love that had shaped her mother's stories, her father's laughter, and the promise of a brighter dawn. And so, Lena returned to the cottage, the cozy haven where memories lingered. She found her father by the hearth, his eyes distant. Agatha, he said, she holds my heart. Lena touched his hand. Father, she whispered, love is not a cage. It is wings. His gaze cleared, and he smiled, the lines on his face softening. Eleanor, he murmured, my sweet Eleanor. Lena knew her path, the one that honored her mother's legacy. She would protect the key, keep love alive, and perhaps, just perhaps, find a way to heal Edmund's fractured world. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting golden hues across the cottage, Lena whispered her promise to the wind. I choose love, she said. Always. Chapter 6 The Key's Legacy Lena kept the key hidden, a secret nestled within her heart. The cottage became her sanctuary, a place where memories whispered and love bloomed like wildflowers. She tended the garden, her hands in the soil, and felt Eleanor's presence, the echo of laughter, the scent of apple blossoms. Agatha's rage simmered, she prowled the forest, her eyes aflame. The townspeople noticed, the way shadows clung to her, the way birds fell silent when she passed. Agatha's hunger grew, she craved the key, its power like a siren's song. But Lena stood firm, her locket glowing, a shield against darkness. One moonless night, Agatha confronted Lena. The cottage trembled, the walls groaning under the weight of ancient magic. Give me the key, Agatha demanded, or suffer the consequences. Lena's voice was steady. I choose love, she said. My mother's love, my father's love. It binds me. Agatha lunged, her fingers inches from Lena's throat. But the locket blazed a beacon of Eleanor's courage. Agatha recoiled, her eyes wide. You cannot defeat me, she hissed. But I can protect, Lena replied. She stepped into the garden, the moonlight bathing her. Agatha, she said, why do you hunger for eternity? Agatha's face contorted, a mask of pain. Love betrayed me, she confessed. I loved a mortal once, a man who promised forever. But he vanished, leaving me hollow. The key offers redemption. Lena's heart softened. Agatha, she said, love is not a weapon. It is a bridge. Let go of darkness. Embrace light. Agatha wavered. The forest held its breath. And then, with a cry, she vanished a wisp of smoke carried away by the wind. Lena knew Agatha would seek other realms, other keys. But for now, the cottage was safe, the heart of love stronger than shadows. And so, Lena tended the garden, the flowers blooming brighter, the apples sweeter. She wrote stories, 
of courage, sacrifice, and the girl who chose love. The townspeople gathered, their eyes wide. Tell us, they said. Tell us of Eleanor's daughter. And Lena did. She wove tales of enchanted forests, hidden keys, and stepmothers who hungered for eternity. The children listened, their imaginations ignited. They asked questions, about love, about choices, about the magic that lingered in everyday moments. And Lena smiled, for she knew her mother's legacy, the legacy of a key that bridged two worlds. Eleanor's love lived on, in Lena's stories, in the laughter that echoed through the cottage, and in the promise of a brighter dawn.